I'm Mary M. Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to do a jack-o'-lantern centerpiece and it's not completed yet so we're going to put it all together for you. And we've got the thunder rolling in the background making it perfect Halloween um, noises here for us today. I took a wooden mask from Michael's and it was a dollar and the funnest part of these is getting these stickers off. If you ever have to get these stickers off, warm them up with your heat gun or embossing tool and then it melts the glue and then you can lift them off a lot easier. So that's kind of a good thing to know. And you could do the back as well to kind of, you could even just kind of do something simple on the back but to give it the Halloween um, feel on the back so it's not just one sided. I did a wash on pumpkin and by wash I mean I added water to my paint so I'm only putting one coat on instead of trying to base coat it with several layers. I did the black for the mouth and the nose and then I used a yellow and then like a lime green up here for the stem. So the uh, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add some dimension to kind of give the up and down look on our um, pumpkin here and I'm going to start by using red orange Crayola and I'm going to let my tool warm up. If you've never worked with the Crayola there is a video that I have on how to do the basics of the wax design and it's on my YouTube site so jump on over there and that will give you a good basics and I'm just going to walk this color. I am using my number two tool and we're just kind of doing it till it runs out. And it's doing pretty good. Sometimes you can use this inexpensive wood and it can be more absorbent. So it could be a good idea to also after you color it just do a light spray varnish over the top as well. And I'm just kind of stopping when I'm getting to the eyes and the mouth and just kind of pulling it and then coming through the other side. So we're starting to get it more roundness so it's not just a flat texture. Remember the slower you pull these, the longer your strokes are going to get. strokes towards you it's a lot easier and move your item around and I'm trying to do it where you can see it so I'm not always doing it the correct angle you don't want to have it where your wax wants to run away from you too against the against you so we've kind of made the little pumpkin part and I think I'm gonna just come in I want to see how this looks the orange instead of bringing out the I'm going to stick with the red orange on the yellow flower too just to kind of tie my colors and you could do it with yellow or dandelion yellows thinner remember each color kind of works a little differently to the center of our little flower here. Alright, now let's go up and do the stem. And I'm just going to use green and I want to pull that up. And I'm just going to kind of make it kind of viney looking. Just kind of wiggle it a little bit. I'm just going to walk it a little bit and I think I'm going to drop down a tool size here. And I'm sorry about setting the project down on you. It's hard to hold it and use both hands. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got some green in our vine, and you can do that anyway if you want it more uniform, then by all means do it more uniform. So let's come back and let's work on the eyes. Do a stroke, and then I'm going to do a descending dot. And I'm going to stick to the outside, I'm going to do a stroke, and I'm going to do a descending dot. And I'm not going to do any more than that um, around the eyes because it starts to be too much. I am going to do a little bit just around the mouth. We'll see if we even want to do the whole thing on that. I'll just kind of leave it just up on top and maybe put a dot up there as well. And I'm going to come back in because we've got the white or the black filled in. If we didn't have the black filled in, I would do more black work around the mouth, but we really don't need it. I'm going to do a little bit on his nose and I'm going to do some white in his mouth and that's really where taking place of where that black would be if we didn't have that filled in. So we've kind of got him done and I don't want to do too much more. I don't want to keep him simple. Sometimes we can overdo it. So I'm going to kind of set that aside for right now. And I'm going to work on my pot just a little bit here. <laughs> this is just a terracotta pot. And I'm going to switch over to a purple color. And the purple color that I'm using is called Purple Mountain Majesty. But you can kind of almost make a similar color just by using the purple crayon and adding white to it. You get a nice lighter purple because purple itself can be almost black. Look at the tips of the crayons, not the paper. That's the color it's going to be. So that is the color of a purple mountain majesty. I'm going to drop that in there. And what I want to do is I want to add some strokes around our pot just to bring in the Halloween color. And I may do a little bit of red orange as well. We'll see how this shows up on the pot. I'm going to warm it up just a little bit more, my tool here. You also can spray your terracotta pot before you start to put the crayon on it. And that will also make it easier to apply. Just a little bit of spray varnish. And as you can see, I'm just doing them um, different lengths. And we're just adding color to our terracotta pot. And I am going to come back in with the orange. I think it needs a little bit more color here. And try not to do things even. Nature is not even. And that, that is really hard for us to do. We want to be even. So I'm going to switch over to my red-orange hair. You could even come back in with black here. Take a look at it and see if you think it needs the black. And the fun thing is when I'm doing videos like this, we want it to see like you're sitting with me in my studio and just having a visit and a chat because so much of this is just changed or figured out as I'm working on it. 
so sometimes it's nice for you to see the process, especially when I do things, bloopers um, that didn't go quite so well. But that gives you the chance to figure out how I fixed it. So I really like to leave things like that in. So we did add the black to that as well. And that just really decorates that pot. What I did next is I took a ribbon. And this was at Michael's and it's got some um, silver sparklies in it. So it's really, really cool. But that was in their Halloween ribbon section. And I just glued that around the terracotta pot and then I'm going to take the floral foam and we're going to stick that in there and you can also glue that in there if you want to really really well now I should have gone back to once you're done with the um, the wooden mask and the terracotta pot before you put the ribbon on varnish it <laughs> and I like to use uh, spray varnish, but if it's going to be something you want to use year after year, use your Triple Thick by Deco Art. It's a brush on, and I would do at least three coats of that so you've got this nice thick protective layer over it so that it keeps the crayon um, nice so you can use it year after year. All right, so we've done that. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to stick it in the middle of my floral. Try to get it straight up and down. And make sure your pot is big enough for your um, jack-o'-lantern here. You don't want a real little pot because this is a bigger piece up here. You want it bigger down here as well. And once we turn that on, <coughs> I forgot to glue his eyes on. Let's glue his eyes on. Let's do them with the um, low temp setting on our glue gun. You shouldn't glue eyes on the high temp. It will melt them to um, this, the, the glue will melt the eye and you won't be able to, it won't wiggle anymore. So we want to make sure that we don't do that. Put him there. And you could use the different types of eyes, but I just thought that added a lot of fun to him. All right, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to take a bow. Now on this one, I want a bigger bow. This is also some really fun ribbon that I found at Michael's in the Halloween ribbon that they have. And the Halloween ribbon is not necessarily found in the Halloween section. And set it up to that to see how big you want it. And I'm just bringing that back and forth, and I'm not going to tie it. We're just going to... But I'm trying to figure out how big I want this before I cut this. So right about there. So we're going to cut that. And I have this one at that angle already. So we're going to cut this one at this angle. Trim that up. So let's get him all nice and laid down in the everything go in the right direction. One of the really nice things I like to tie ribbons with is Chanel stems because they they show they already have color in them instead of the wire. Now shape him up. And another thing I do with my wire ribbon is I pull this up and trim it so that that doesn't show because it will show the wire. See how that looks already? Kind of wiggle on you. You want to, don't want it to see. You don't want to take too much because you still want your shape of your ribbon, but you want that. So we're going to put him on. A little jack o' lantern there. And I'm just twisting him in the back. Cut these stems off. I'm done with that. You probably could have used half of one. But that's okay. Have that nice and tight up there. You could also glue it on if you wanted to. Now I'm going to come back in here and I've turned my glue gun up to the high setting. 
and I'm going to put my Spanish moss on top and I'm going to glue it on my foam and Spanish moss makes such a mess there's just no way around it guess I'm vacuuming tonight and keep it in bigger pieces you also could do like candy corn in here and it would kind of hold it up if you didn't use the foam that would be really cute too and kind of do it as a candy holder so for it might sag a little bit when people start to eat it but find a way to hold that up in there I think that would be really cute as well okay so I'm gonna kind of let that hang over a bit and I'm gonna glue this guy up because he's heavy and he doesn't want to stay up so we're just gonna glue him right to that piece him for just a second or two there. Get out of our way. Always get your strings. There's nothing worse than seeing somebody's project and seeing the glue strings. So we always want to get our glue strings. And then I am going to come in and just brighten this up a little bit with some fall leaves. Not too many just here and there and your fall leaves you can find them at the store any of the craft stores or Walmart or Michaels you can, you can find them really reasonable for about a duck, ba, dollar a bag for quite a few of them so and it kind of just fills it all in and gives it some color so it's not just dead moss but we're still staying with that same fall theme. And I'm going to do just a little bit more in the back because we don't have as much going on in the back. And like I said, color this and do the back so it's double-sided as well. So we've got that going on. Okay. Then the other thing I'm going to do is these are cute little spiders. I found these at... Michaels and I love these there is a smaller version as well and they have a clip on them unfortunately I don't want the clip today but that makes it really nice because you can just clip it on something and then when you're done with it just remove it and you can use it somewhere else so I'm gonna take this little guy and we're gonna glue him to the bottom at an angle and again remember to get all those little um, spider webs off unless you want to pretend they came from him all right now we've got a big little big mess over here and here's our little guy and he would be kind of cute maybe even to set up there like that so he looks like you have the mom and the baby so I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That was kind of fun. I love doing flower arrangements, and unfortunately, I don't get to do that as much as I would like to, talking about clipping this little guy on. So, if you have any questions about anything we did here today, please email me at art at miriamjoy.com for any of the wax products we used today please visit my website at miriamjoy.com. There's also the YouTube link so you can find fun videos. There's always something to keep you uh, going and always for the season new ones that we're always trying to put up for you as well. And there is a Facebook link as well. You don't have to be a member of Facebook. Just jump on over and see what we're creating and all the fun we're having. So thank you for joining me today. God bless.